Every fall I see lots of posts about the hickory tussock caterpillar, warning you that it is very poisonous and that you shouldn't touch it. These types of warnings are commonly exaggerated, and I wanted to know just how poisonous it really was. So I decided to play with one to see what happens. In this video I'll introduce you to the caterpillar, explain the difference between poisons and allergic reactions, and then I'll play with the caterpillar and see what it does to me. I'll also tell you what some expert entomologists say about this caterpillar. Let me introduce my little friend. This is the hickory tussock caterpillar, which will turn into the hickory tussock moth. It lives in the eastern half of North America and lays eggs in May and June on a variety of trees including hickory, walnut, ash, elm, maple, and oak. By late summer and early fall, the white hairy caterpillars are fairly easy to spot against green foliage. It is covered with white hairs and a line of black ones runs down the middle of its back. It also has four small clusters of longer black hairs two at the front and two at the back, called pencils. It's quite a cute caterpillar, and I can see why people might want to touch it. Some say it's poisonous. A poison is a chemical that causes harm to our body. The dose is important, but in general, a given poison will affect all of us the same way. For example, we will all be killed if we eat too much arsenic. By this definition, the caterpillar is not poisonous. When a chemical does not harm us directly, but instead causes our immune system to react, it's called an allergen. Dust and pollen are common allergens. One of the key differences between a poison and an allergen is that the latter only affects some people. We don't all get hay fever, and we don't all react to poison ivy, which is also an allergic reaction. Poison ivy should really be called allergenic ivy, but that makes it sound very mild. The hairs of the tussock caterpillar have small barbs on the end, and these get stuck in your skin like tiny spears. Some people have an allergic reaction to these hairs. Now let's see what happens when I touch the caterpillar. I first played with it a bit, being very gentle, and then waited for a reaction. There was none. Gentle handling of the caterpillar does not cause an allergic reaction. Since nothing happened when I played with the caterpillar a little bit, I decided to take a more drastic approach. I took the caterpillar and rubbed it against the sensitive skin on the back of my forearm. Now it took several takes to get this video the way I wanted. By the time I was done, I had rubbed two caterpillars a total of four times in the same spot. This is far worse than any casual exposure a gardener might get. Under a magnifying glass, the white hairs were clearly visible on my arm and they didn't easily rub off. There was no rash, but I did have some mild itching, and the area swelled up for about 24 hours. This is an allergic reaction, so everyone will react differently. I do get poison ivy, and I react strongly to stinging nettles, but for the most part, I am not allergic to plants. Several entomologists said that this caterpillar gets a bad rap. Allergic reactions are very rare. Some people develop a slight redness, and a few get itchy or have a burning rash. An entomologist at the University of Connecticut estimates that only about one in a hundred people will experience allergic reactions to the hickory tussock caterpillar. But in all his experience, he has never met anyone who had a reaction. A study that looked at 65 exposures that were reported to a poison center over a two-year period found that pediatric exposures were responsible for 80% of the reports. 92 were skin exposures and 8% were oral. For some reason, kids like to put the caterpillar in their mouths. Washing the area, removing the hairs, and using antihistamine or steroid cream cleared up the problems within 24 hours. The hickory tussock caterpillar is not poisonous, as so many people think. But a few people might get a mild allergic reaction. If you don't do something stupid like I did and rub it all over a sensitive part of your body, you should not have a problem. This is a beautiful little caterpillar. Don't kill it and let it run free in your garden. If you enjoyed this video, you'll also like my book 
called Garden Myths. In it, I look at common gardening advice and determine if it is really true. I cover such topics as, does beer really kill slugs? Can you use vinegar to get rid of weeds? And will citronella plants keep mosquitoes away? If you are interested in this book, the best place to get it is Amazon.